Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Brittany Lee. I'm Ian Fuego here. Back to do a, another review for you guys. This one is going to be a review for a movie that was originally shot, I believe, in 2005. Long uh, time ago. Long, long time ago. But uh, we you actually just saw the fourth in this series just a few days ago uh, when we Crowley. reviewed Victor Crowley. So we are jumping back in the way back machine right now. I know Brittany didn't get a chance to go because she was working that night, but yeah, she did that. watch the first three iterations, so she'll be sitting in on those reviews. But she does know plenty about the Hatchet series outside of Victor Crowley, even though we watched that already. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the original Hatchet right now, written and directed by Adam Green, who we recently met and is just as awesome and down to earth as you would hope he would be, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, we did a whole vlog talking about it, um, so I don't know if that will have come out by now or not. So we'll do this like we do our normal reviews. We'll talk about the, uh, the, the overall thoughts, the story, the acting, the effects. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about overall thoughts. I, I have not, like, the, my affinity for this movie has not waned at all over the years. When I first saw it, I loved it. It was an immediate throwback to the 80s slashers with tons of gore. It was so much fun. It was funny. It was classic, you know, um, college kids who were actually at Mardi Gras just getting picked off one at a time. But there was so much humor and so much gore and a fantastic bad guy portrayed by Kane Hodder yeah. that I just really, really loved the movie both the first time and every subsequent time I've ever watched it. Brittany, what did you think of it? I thought it was really good. Like you said, it throws back to that 1980s slasher horror. Um, it's got that that good low budget gore <coughs> that that you like. You know, like you're looking at it going. That's mostly all uh, practical, handmade. Yeah, yeah, practical props, mm -hmm. and it's so awesome. I love when they do that. They put all the work into it, mm -hmm. and I know they call it low budget gore, but that's that's where the, the art is. I think mm -hmm. and it's just I love it. It's great. So it was overall, it was awesome. I, was I didn't, I didn't let care for for the main girl. Oh yeah, but Mary Beth but, in the first one, yeah. Yeah, but were overall, you surprised by it? Because I don't know if you knew what no, to expect I, out of it. I didn't know what to expect out of it, other than the fact that you said that it was like a, a total slash em up uh, throwback. Mm -hmm. Slash em up, I love that. Hack and slash em up. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, yeah, what did you think? Um, this is a film that I loved when I first saw it because anytime there's a melding of comedy and horror together, it's just right up my alley. Um, the, the familiar faces was even better. The fact that we had the dude from, uh, Wayne's World, <laughs> you know, uh, Noah's Arcade. And yep. the fact that we had the kid from The Gosby Show and, uh, he was Olivia's best friend. And, you know, the Harmony, the hottie from Buffy, and she's like... Showing her boobies and being, uh, you know, nice about that, which is cool. But uh, none, nonetheless, the horror is what we get back to, obviously. And uh, damn, man. Adam Green did a fantastic job about uh, crafting a, a universe, almost, you know? Which is what's so cool about the fact that, which is what made him so easily accessible for jumping back for a fourth installment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Great so, film. yeah, overall, we all obviously really enjoyed the first Hatchet movie. Uh, the story of it is basically some college kids who are at Mardi Gras. Uh, one in particular wants to leave the drinking area and the bars and go on the Why? haunted swamp Why? tour. I would be this guy, though. <laughs> I would want to go on a haunted swamp tour. In I've heard nothing Still but drunk. good things about, swamp tour. about ghost <laughs> stuff in New Orleans, especially around Mardi Gras. I've heard nothing yeah. but good stuff about that. Yeah. So I I could totally understand his, his desire to do so, but his group splinters. Well, he wants to do this because everywhere he looks, he sees his ex-girlfriend. That's a good point. Dude, I, I don't want to be in the middle of Mardi no. Gras with all these drunk chicks I don't like that's a good thinking point thinking about the girl Sleuth. who just broke Sleuth my heart since I so nicely call them. I want to go I want to go do the swamp tour thing and see some haunted crap <laughs> that's fair and so um, his his close friend who really doesn't want to go with him decides to stick go. with him because he's a good friend and he's even like no and he like goes on like reluctantly he's like the cartoon of the whole movie yeah. Um, but he's really funny. At one point, he even is, literally has climbed a tree to avoid danger. Get down! Like, 
I, I don't know. I don't know how I got up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta get down. Uh, I, I can't. And then he tries, and then he just <laughs> whoa, and he like goes stiff and falls all the way up. Yeah. He, it, it was so they decide these two guys of the group, the other members of the group, um, stay behind to party more. One of which is portrayed by the writer and director Adam Green himself. Yep. He even has a few lines where he's like, no way, I'm going to hang back and blah, blah, blah. So they hang back, and we follow the the, the white guy and the black guy as they went to this swamp tour who was... Uh, first, they try and approach Tony Todd, um, you know, who is uh, Reverend Zombie. And uh, he says, no, but you might be able to... Yeah. You might be able to find um, a, a, a tour up the road at this place. And yeah. this place, it turns out, the tour is run by Perry Shen, <laughs> who is a hilarious actor um, who is of Asian descent. However, he's playing a Creole <laughs> tour, a tour guide, rather. And, yeah. um, and it's, it's, it's funny because he's trying his best, and all of the tour people on it are, like, calling him out on his stuff. And he's like... God, would you just let me do my job? You know, and like uh, he slips into I mean, the very. I mean, he's like, I mean, oh, oh, yeah, uh, you know, and so he slips back, and then later on, he like slips again into a straight American, and they're like, what? Are, how, why did you just talk completely the normal? He's like, okay, guys, hear me out. And like, and it's so funny. Like, they, they, he's such a hilarious uh, actor. So yeah, he's, he's the tour guy. Multi talented man. Um, and he takes this boatload of people um, on a on a like a. Uh, a, a, a tour of the Louisiana swamp into territory that is run by a legend called Victor Crowley. Mm -hmm. And um, when they get into the area, they're warned by the local drunk, Jack Cracker, um, who is just <laughs> sitting out and he's, he's Jay like, no, Cracker. get out of here. Vic, this is Victor Crowley's swamp. This is and they're like, what is he saying? And he's just like, oh, that's just old Jack Cracker. Uh, don't worry about what he's saying. He, he drinks his own piss. And then, like, later on, he's like, they drive, they, they drive away on the boat, and then Jack Cracker's like, God, you're all going to die. And then he reaches down and grabs his bottle jug of piss and starts drinking it. It's so hilarious, man. Um, so the movie is really funny, little funny things. And so they get um, their, their, their boat runs afoul of a rock and starts sinking. Just like um, uh, the Titanic, God, it looks like you're trying to like kiss someone through the lens there. It was, it was. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but they run afoul of a rock and they start sinking and there's a uh, alligators all around or gators yeah. uh, because it's Florida Gators. and so they have to get on solid land and when they do, it turns out they're basically right in front of the residence of Victor Crowley, who was um, this local legend who was a deformed boy that was actually killed by a hatchet to the face by his own father after local kids tried to set him on, or tried to scare him out of the house, but ended up accidentally setting the house on fire. And so now, Victor Crowley is a lost soul who is super strong and wanders the world each night crying out for his lost father. And that's what starts off so awesome because as soon as they get to the dry land, they hear... Yes, the Colin Cod that so we've seen in creepy, all the bands. And then he immediately like makes an appearance. Like there's no lead up in yeah. and that's part of what inspired me for Bracer a little bit. Um there's no like slow lead up and showing only bits and pieces of him. The first time Victor Crowley emerges, he emerges from his house full body shot yeah, and then I he rushes at them and then just peels this old woman's face back yeah which i think is good though because it gives you yeah. just the full ferocity of the enemy man mm -hmm. and just uh, i mean there's no like gray area about that shit yeah he's like a lion on the loose like mm -hmm. and they even use like lion sound effects for him later on in the series for his growls and stuff but yeah. but yeah so now it's just about the kids and everyone on the tour trying to get out alive and that's the rest of the movie without spoiling it. So um, let's talk about the story. Uh, I just talked about it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was an excellent, again, it's a excellent. perfect reason to get up, people Rob? into a swamp and into Victor Crowley's land and then to be meat to the slaughter. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, it was it was a great lead up. It was, it was very well done. Um, the only thing I didn't like, like I said before, was the main girl, the, our, our final girl. Mary Beth. Who they mm -hmm. recast, right? They recast in yeah, the second and third movie. The second and third mm -hmm. movie, yeah. 
Um, who is a much better actress? The yes. Best of the first one. Yeah, Danielle Harris took over the role. So, Fuego, what did you think about the story? I thought it was awesome. I love just all the nods to, you know, like meta horror and stuff like that. The fact that the entire film is very self aware. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always enjoyed films like that, you know, whether it's Scream or, you know, whatever, that just is, you know, kind of uh, self referential and yet, you know, nasty in its approach. And this one was, uh, dang. I mean, uh, as, as good as anything I've seen. So, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk about the acting. Yeah. Uh, I agree that Mary Beth is uh, leaving something to be desired. Yeah. She starts off as just a side character on the boat. That our two main characters, like uh, one of them, the white guy is trying to cozy up to be at the encouragement of his friend, mm -hmm. and um, she's even like, "Look, I didn't come out here to to meet a boyfriend, just you know." To meet you. Um, yeah, exactly. Just to meet you. Yeah, Brittany liked that particular line of dialogue because it was uh, so evil. I didn't come out here. Hoping that I would just meet you, something yeah, like that. I it was so sure. aggressive, that but so awesome. but uh, but yeah, um, you know, I thought the main character is great. The the white guy's great. The the black guy, the friend, is hilarious and oh, funny. Yeah. Um, Mary Beth did her job. She was quiet up until the end. Um, I think Danielle Harris still would have been stronger the whole time, but but she did her job, I guess. Um, the uh, the old couple were hilarious, and oh, Perry Shen was hilarious. And then the uh, the would be girls gone wild guy uh, <laughs> with his two actresses. Yeah. They were really funny too because the two actresses didn't get along, so they were like fighting back and forth. That was a very girls. And involved. they actually funny both like comparison. they they both make a return in Hatchet too. Yeah. I can't tell you how, but yeah. but remember the dude's camera oh, is out there in the woods. It's all funny. And let's just say that yeah. yeah 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 it is. And Jack Cracker <laughs> finds the camera. And he like and it, and they got all three actors back. They got um, the dude behind the camera to lend his voice and stuff like that. Oh boy! And not only that, but that's where we first see a character from the fourth movie. Is yeah. when he's looking at that footage. One of the girls that the creep walks up to. Oh, so it was in the second one. In the that? second movie, and yeah, she's okay. like, "I'm 14, you weirdo." That ends up being the same girl that comes back in the fourth movie. So, uh, and she was actually, <clears throat> dude, she was so much better than even initially I was expecting her to be. Well, they yeah, that we talked about that in Victor Crowley. So yeah. back to Hatchet. different review. Um, so uh, yes, the the we all enjoyed the story. We all enjoyed the acting, except for maybe Mary Beth. Jack Cracker was fun. Perry Shan, though, I mean, what did you think oh, of? Oh, he was the, awesome. Yeah. I loved him so much. It was everything he did, the way he kept breaking character, mm -hmm. the um, his his uh, level of frustration with everyone, <laughs> the fact that he is like, oh, okay, I, all I'm trying to do here is make a buck, people. Like, you yeah. suck, man. Yeah. Last night I didn't seek the boat. Why am I seeking the boat tonight? Like, like, like I'm supposed to have all the answers. Yeah. Forget you people. Yeah, he was great. <laughs> Get it, Brittany. I love Damn. him. That was, he, was, he was awesome. He was Fuego, great. what did you think of the actor? The, the actors were, you know, serviceable enough. Aww. I mean, but I mean, fun. And that's the biggest thing in a film like this where they're just kind of doing horror and gore and fun and uh, comedy and stuff like that. I mean, they balanced it beautifully. And the cast was all on top of that shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. So the last thing we need to talk about is obviously the effects. And uh, I, I just love them. I mean, the gore is Brutal. amazing. <laughs> There's been memes and posters and all kinds of stuff of the old woman getting her head can open back. Still maybe the best kill of the entire series, dude. It, it really might <laughs> be. So One of the best vicious. kills in horror history, quite Man. honestly. Vicious. Um, and then uh, there's just limbs uh, uh, all over the place. There's blood being thrown up on trees. And, like, just all kinds of crazy stuff. People's, well, I don't know what is in the first one and what's in the later one. But I know, like, in later ones, people's, like skeleton literally ripped out from the inside like it's a really awesome like the gore is just amazing in these movies the is awesome. and really the first really one great. was no different what did you think of it did it surprise you because i didn't kind of warn you oh, yeah. how gory it was going to be there was a there was quite a bit of gore like i thought okay yeah there's going to be like blood i thought you know more like total 80s throwback you know like mm -hmm. it was going to be more like nightmare on elm street <clears throat> type thing where we saw a lot of of the fake blood being tossed around, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of of our uh, practical gore, but 
they, when they first start with the old people. It's so <laughs> awesome. It's just like, oh, yeah, because the first one yeah. is actually him getting yeah, hacked yeah, diagonally. Yeah, 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 he hacks the old man. You knew right like, off the oh bat then. You were just like, like, fuck. Damn, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is cool. He's just like, and he's screaming the whole time, and it's so great. And the yeah. old lady is just like, aren't you freaking young people going to help? Yeah. <laughs> nope. No. Nope, they're I'm gonna just gonna go watch this way. run. Um, Fuego? It's a nasty movie at points, man. I mean, and I give credence to, you know, Green for going that far. I commend the man. I mean, especially, he said at the screening that we went to that, uh, you know, when there's like 36 hits of a character. 30, 30 hits. 30, by the blunt end of an axe, yeah. which makes it funny rather yeah. than scary. Yeah, exactly. When you per- over- his gore are jokes. Yeah, when you over-exemplify and you just go to it just in an insane number or manner or whatever, that's where you realize, okay, this guy is not really taking things seriously. And that just shows these films are not to be taken seriously in light of everything you know crazy that's going on in the world without mentioning anything. But, you know, it's... It's still fun. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> it really, you know, really at least is. for us. Yeah, so. it's yeah. it's it's horror. <coughs> it's horror comedy that's fun horror comedy that's not just trying to be um, making fun of itself, right? And and being stupid. It's like we're gonna do this horror right, but we're gonna know that we're doing horror when we're doing it. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna have that meta poking fun at itself feel without saying, hey, we're poking fun at ourselves. Right. Yeah, we're right. aware of what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, after this, we need to watch the late to rest movies, because they're right up there with Hatchet as far That's as That's what I've heard. And, and same with The Collector and Collection. Isn't one of those the guys from Lamb of God in late to rest? Maybe, I don't know. Ah, oh, dude. Oh. All right, so that's anyway, going to do sorry. it, I think, for <laughs> our review of Hatchet, you guys. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, Awesome music all throughout the series, um, metal all and of God, which hardcore is why I was rock, <laughs> all kinds of awesome stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen Hatchet, you're missing out, especially if you're a big fan of 80s uh, slashers. Check it out. Let us know what you think of it uh, down in the comments below. If you haven't seen it, are you going to go check it out now? You definitely should because it's so worth your time. But until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. I'm Brittany Lee. I've been humming Fuego. And remember... Stay scared!